Hey, Eagle fans, I'm Thomas Mock. Welcome to Photo Eagles Now. We're jumping the latest Eagles news and rumors here on a Monday. First, though, you guys want to shout out in tomorrow's video. Answer the question down below. Are you going to an Eagles game in 2022? What do you think? Are you going to make it to an actual Eagles game? If you are, which one? If not, go ahead and just type N down below for no. And, of course, you get a shout out either way. I am trying to go to at least one. I think Eagles, Cowboys, Sunday Night Football in October in Philadelphia. That's the one I'm kind of keying in on. I gotta get tickets yet, but that's the one I am looking at here uh, later on this year. And of course, shout out from Friday's video. Nathan Nathaniel Drumming got our trivia question right. How many touchdowns did T.O. have against the Giants? The answer was three, and Nathaniel was selected by producer Trey, so shout out to uh, Nathaniel Drumming. Okay, let's jump in the latest Eagles news and rumors. A lot of stuff going on here, including the newest addition to the safety depth chart. We'll talk about Jaquiski Tart and him being added, as well as a look at Quez Watkins and the possibility of a big breakout year, year three, uh, for young Quez Watkins. Start, though, with, of course, the news over the weekend, and that is the addition of Jaquiski Tart. Now, this happened, again, just a couple of days ago, and it kind of came out of the blue. I honestly kind of forgot that Tart was a free agent, or else I might have mentioned him in kind of our you know free agent players to sign over the past couple of months. However, he was available. The 49ers did not want to uh, give him a new contract after being uh, a 49er and a starter for the majority of the 49ers last season, and now he comes into what is a very interesting depth chart right now, which we'll look at for the Philadelphia Eagles. Again, one of the more desperate positions that they needed help with that really rounds out an already pretty strong roster. Now, Tart did play and play a lot for the 49ers in 2021. There's some pretty good stats floating around on Twitter showing how much better the passing defense was for the 49ers with Tart on the football field versus Tart off the football field. No interceptions, but 66 tackles. He is a veteran and can be a potential leader on the backside of what looks like, again, a very strong Eagle secondary now that they might have their other starting safety. Before we get into Bleeding Green Nation's thoughts on Tart here quickly, this kind of eliminates a Jesse Bates trade. Let me just say that. I mean, I'm sure they try. No reports that they did or did not, but I'm pretty sure the Bates uh, uh, a trade is probably dead, and that's something that we need to at least acknowledge here today on a Monday. So, Bleeding Green Nation, good write-up on Tart here. Quote, Tart is hardly anything special. 30-year-old ranked 55 out of 62 safeties graded by Pro Football Focus last season. He allowed a 95.0 passer rating when targeted and logged a career-high 13.2 missed tackle rate. Still, Tart gives the Eagles another option in a position where they lack both insp inspiring starters and any semblance of proven depth. Now the Eagles can have Anthony Harris, Marcus Epps, and Tart battle out for the two starting safety spots and the likes of Andre, uh, I think it's a ch 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 Cherry, I don't know, I mess up how you say his last name, uh, Kayvon Walls and Jared Maiden and Reed Blankenship are more likely fighting for backup jobs. Praise uh, uh, for backup jobs. Um... I think it's very, very clear that this shows that they're not in love with Epps or Wallace. And now Micro Steps can still win uh, the starting job. I think he right now is the leader in the clubhouse before Tart got there. But it shows you that Kayvon Wallace is not ready. They would not go out and make this move if they were at OTAs, they were at minicamp, and they were like, wow, Marcus Epps looks really ready to go. Now, not saying he's looked terrible because the reports are out there that he didn't look bad, but I think that this goes to show they wanted more depth on this depth chart. They wanted to have a veteran in there just in case Epps, you know, either wins the starting job and then struggles or he's unable to win the starting job. You do, you're only as strong as your weakest link, and you don't want one safety spot to really hinder what will else be a very good defensive backfield with really good corners on, you know, both sides and also in the slot with Avante Maddox and a fantastic front seven. We talked about this. Could they have won games or can they win games with out improving the safety spot as it currently stood. Yes, 100%. But Tart gives them a little bit more depth, and especially the leadership ability being over the age of 30 that I think will go a long way towards Philadelphia continuing to have a strong secondary and what will probably be the strongest secondary they have had at least since 2017, possibly even better because the corners are better than both Jalen Mills uh, and Patrick Robinson. Tart, again, He's not anything crazy special, but he has been a starter in this football league. He has been a uh, a playmaker at times, and I think that he's cheap and is a good one-year signing for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, add rape and comment down below. You guys like the move? Type L down below for like or type D down below for dislike. I'm, I'm fine with it. Again, a cheap veteran move. I do like it. Uh, let's move over here to Quez Watkins. Now, we bring up Quez Watkins because we talk about the receiving core a lot here on Philadelphia Eagles now. We talk about A.J. Brown. We talk about Devontae Smith and how these two are going to be the stars. And then there's all everyone else, right? Quez Watkins, and you got Jalen Rager, and you have uh, Greg War, you have Zach Paschal, like you have the other receivers, right? But Quez Watkins, I'm reading this write-up by Philly Voice about how he potentially could break out this year. And I loved it. I think it was a great article. I think it was well-written. I want to share their thoughts on why Quez could pop here uh, in 2022. 
First, though, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel for plenty more coverage this week. We're going to do mailbag videos later this week. We're going to do news and rumors. We're going to do segments. We're going to dive into everything Philadelphia this week and every week, you know, here on out. I mean, we do a ton of work here on the channel. If you guys like uh, what we do, go down below and subscribe. Help us grow as we're at 30,276. I want to get to 31 here eventually, and we will. Let's just keep growing it by giving it uh, a little subscribe button tap on the red button below. Okay, here was Philly Voices uh, write-up on Watkins, throw it up on our screen. Quote, when the ball isn't going to Watkins' way, opposing defenses will still have to respect his deep speed, which could help get open, uh, which could help open up the short and intermediate areas of the field for Brown, Smith, and Goddard to operate. In a way, Watkins is a perfect complement to the trio in that he'll open up space for them, he won't require a heavy target share, and he has proven that he can make big plays when the ball comes his way. Watkins averaged 3.4 targets per game in 2021, even if that total dips a smidge in 2022 while going from wide receiver 2, the wide receiver three, I believe he's being slept on as a bit of a playmaker who can make a real impact in some games this season, end quote. Now, this is a very, very, I would say, positive piece on Quez Watkins, obviously, in saying that even if he, you know, has less catches per game, the yards don't, don't uh, goes down a little bit, it'll be fine. I agree with that, but I also think that Watkins must show improvement this year. Like, this is a loaded wide receiver group. When I say loaded, you focus on the two starters, but there are still plenty of receivers behind him who are battling for that wide receiver three spot. If Watkins lets up a little bit, Zach Pascal will take his spot. If Jalen Rager magically plays as he was once supposed to play when drafted in the first round, uh, Quez Watkins will lose that spot. So my hope is that it's not necessarily a, oh, we have A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, I'm comfortable now sort of a, a vibe from Quez Watkins. I hope it's a, oh... I better get my act together, and I better improve this year, or else I'm going to be further down the depth chart. I'm never going to get a second contract. So I think he has all the tools. I think he has all of the skills and abilities to go ahead and be a legit deep threat in this league. He's what this offense needs because, yes, you have Smith, yes, you have Brown, but a true you know, straight-line burner like Watkins really makes a difference opening up the football field. I'm expecting big things from him this year, and I hope that he performs because this can be, like I said, an impressive wide receiver depth chart, an impressive offense, and a really good football team in 2022. Um, how many receiving yards will Watkins have in 2022? Does he get over 400? That's kind of my number where it's like, I would like to see 500 yards receiving, but does he get over 400? Let me know how many receiving yards Watkins will have in 2022. Go down below and give me your comment and your thoughts right now. Now, before we go ahead and continue on with our final story of the day, including Nick Sirianni's Pro Football Focus, Pro Football Network head coaching rankings, the A.J. Brown jerseys are still available. Order your A.J. Brown jersey today. Your official, not knockoff, not cheap overseas quality. The real Nike deal from chatsports.com forward slash A.J. Brown. Had someone DM me on Twitter the other day showing me their A.J. Brown jersey. Looks absolutely fantastic. I kind of want one. I got Devontae Smith hanging up behind you, but I kind of want a brown one too. Maybe if I go to two Eagle games this year, I'll wear two different jerseys, right? It's not a bad idea. I think a black one. I got a green Devontae Smith. I might need a black one. Uh, if you guys want to go ahead and pick up your jersey, link down below me. It's also on your screen, chatsports.com forward slash AJ Brown. Okay, it is the offseason. We'll end on this story, and that is uh, rankings. And we've been seeing pro football focus rankings, pro football network rankings, and their head coaching rankings are out. I was very curious where they put Nick Sirianni. And uh, he's in a pretty good spot, very good in terms of the NFC East. Let's start with the top five, though. Obviously not there yet because there are some great coaches in the National Football League. Here was Pro Football Network's top five head coaches. Uh, obviously, Andy Reid slides in there at number one. Bill Belichick, two. Mike Tomlin, three. Uh, you got Sean McVay, four. And John Harbaugh, five. Now, you can move people up and down this list. I'm not going to be like, ooh, well, Mike Tomlin should be lower than Sean McVay because McVay had won a Super Bowl and Tomlin, you know, didn't play well or he had a you know, poor year by big whatever. Uh, this is fine. These are clearly some of the five best coaches in the National Football League. We don't care where Bill Belichick is ranked because we're talking about the Eagles. What matters, though, is the NFC East coaches. I like this list. Look, Sirianni at 15, Mike McCarthy at 18, Riverboat Ron at 20, and Brian Dable at 29. Now, I think Dable can eventually be, you know, higher than McCarthy and Ron Rivera, and I think he will do that probably this year because I'm a big fan of Brian Dable. I hate that he's a giant coach, but whatever. But, of course, because he has no head coaching experience, he's down at the bottom of the list, which makes sense. But Sirianni being the highest in this list, I think, is rightly deserved and respectable. I think that he has a chance to make a huge leap. He's set up for a huge leap in 2022. I mean, if he's the 15th best coach in the National Football League right now, if he takes this offense from the number one rushing attack and like mid-20s passing to number one rushing attack and top 10 passing, and they're scoring 28 plus points per game and they're winning double-digit games, I mean, Sirianni's stock is going to skyrocket. You'll see it be in the same league as Sean McVay. Now, McVay has a lot more wins and playoff berths and Super Bowl wins now, uh, obviously, than Sirianni, but you can see the blueprint start to kind of mold and get this love that they have for Sean McVay and they have for... 
uh, 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 the 49er head coach right now. Um, Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan. There we go. I had to think about it. But I, I think we're in the same mold here. I think Sirianni has a real chance for a huge leap. Now, the flip side is if they don't perform well, then he's going to take a nosedive and might get fired. But if they perform well, it's going to be, I mean, big, big time uh, for Nick Sirianni here in 2022. Wait, okay, where would you rank Nick Sirianni as a head coach? Is he top of the pack, middle of the pack, bottom of the pack? Let me know where you would rank Nick Sirianni down below right now in the comments section. There you go. There's all the latest on our Philadelphia Eagles news and rumors for a Monday. As I always say, plenty of great content coming up later on this week, including a mailbag video. Hashtag Eagles down below in the comments section. Got to be a subscriber. Be a part of that. And uh, let me know what questions you guys want to go ahead and ask, and I'll try and answer as many as I can later on this week. Hashtag Eagles down below. That is all the time we have for today. Philadelphia Eagles now. Our producer Trace Thomas Mott signing off for the rest of your day.